This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. It was a jobs report with a little something for everyone. It's the reason we really hate economists. On the one hand, a drop in the unemployment rate. But on the other hand, payroll growth was depressed by bad weather in January. So what does this all mean? Well, my next guests are here to help us sort this out. David Simmons of Standard Charter Bank. He is a Bloomberg Best Economist and also Jeannie Brantover, Managing Director at Boyden Global Executive Search. Jeannie Brantover has handled executive placement for some of the world's largest financial companies for nearly 25 years. You'd hardly know it. Bloomberg Business Week has named her one of the world's top 50 most influential headhunters. Congratulations. I didn't know that. <laughs> Wonderful. You. Now, David Simmons, we don't really hate economists, but what makes us really perplexed is, on the one hand, this seems like a really great job report because no one expected 9% unemployment, right, down from 9.5%, 9.5%. Right. And yet, on the other hand, what are we talking about, 36,000 jobs? Yes. That doesn't sound like a lot of jobs in an economy that, what would you need, about 100,000 to grow? I mean, yeah, you want to be looking at sort of 150, 200,000 for it to be growing, but also you're going to have more people coming back into the labor force, so you probably want that number to be even higher. But the fact that this month was held down so much was simply due to the weather. You had 866,000 people not able to get to work just simply due to bad weather, which even in an economy of this size is a massive number. You normally get around 450,000 in January. January is obviously a typically but a bad month. Can't you guys do something with those seasonally adjusted numbers? Don't you have some kind of special computer program that can figure that out for yeah. us? You, you do have that seasonally adjusted, but unfortunately that's in a separate survey. That's in the household survey. It doesn't feed into the non-farm payroll number. Those are two separate surveys. So the non-farm payroll number was depressed by that. So we just have to live with this kind of imbalance that exists. On the one hand, unemployment rate goes down, but we're still not generating enough jobs to really make a dent in the overall unemployment level. Yes, but I mean, one thing we were particularly encouraged by was the rise in manufacturing. I mean, manufacturing rose 49,000, which is essentially the whole the private side increase. And you look at the manufacturing data we had from the ISM earlier this week, that was positive with rising new orders and rising employment. So this is still a good leading indicator. And manufacturing has been one of those sectors that's been in the real doldrums and in benefiting from global growth as well, which looks still pretty promising. All right. Now, Jeannie Brantover, I mean, I guess they're not counting the numbers from your business, because unless I know something different, you're not placing people in manufacturing jobs right now. You're dealing with the executive suites. You're dealing with mainly financial institutions around the world. Has the weather affected them as well? The weather has definitely affected them, but it's really the interview process that it's affecting. So they're hiring, and they want to hire, and they're spending the money on retained search to hire, but we're not finishing our searches because of the weather. So the the problem is the hires, and, and partially what David's saying is totally right, they're not hiring because they can't get through the process of hiring. So a quick story, we had very senior people, two candidates going in for final rounds several weeks ago, canceled because of the weather. Then the final round was rescheduled for the next week, canceled because of weather. We are now one month backlogged from them getting hired. So it, it's happening at all levels, at all institutions, because of New York's weather and the country's weather. Haven't they heard of something called the internet? I mean, can't you use video conferencing? They I mean, won't. at that level, you don't use it. You, first of all, you do use it, but not for final rounds. It, you know, you really are looking for emotional intelligence in person. What are you really all about? It's one thing on the screen, it's another in person. All right, so David, if we set aside the weather, I know you can't change it for us, but if we were to set it aside and look Look deeper into the numbers. You say there is a glimmer of hope, but what about the number of people that have exited the workforce, that have exited the labor market? So, in fact, they're not really getting counted at all. Right. When you look at the um, headline survey, that does actually look quite bad, and there were a lot of people exiting. But when you look at the seasonal adjustments, which they do in January every year, there was really a zero net on net change. So, you saw that most of the people who went who exited the um, unemployment side actually went into jobs. And so that was promising. That was really the resultant for the 0.4 decline. Now, you know, people might argue about well, should we be at 9.4, should we be at 12.2, uh, depending on the participation rate that you like. Like, if you count people la leaving the labor force, that has its influence, but the 0.4 decline was definitely promising. Even I couldn't put a bad spin on that. You couldn't put a bad spin on What exactly. do you think is going to happen in the future? <laughs> what do you, what's the outlook? Well, we think that unemployment is going to rise, but that's going to be because people come back into the labor force because they're more encouraged. And we are positive on how look. We are seeing a strong demand from the manufacturing sector and also in services. But it's once investment rises, people need people to operate those machines. People mm -hmm. don't buy machines and let them sit idle. So you tend to increase your investment first, which we've been seeing, especially due to the tax cuts. 
that were enacted in December, and then they start hiring later. So you are going to have somewhat of a lag, but we are being positive for this year. Jeannie Brantover, what about the types of salaries and the types of bonuses that are being offered? I know a lot of people are still waiting for their bonuses from 2010. Right. You've described how we're getting into a longer-term compensation package, less cash, more stock, more performance-based. What's been the reaction? Well, what's really happening is it's deferred. That's the portion that people are very concerned about. But the reality is it's going to become a best practice. And a portion of everybody's bonus is going to be in stock, in equity, in a different form than cash, and it's not going to be paid right away. It's going to be paid, you know, in a vesting schedule over years. So it's going to be very interesting if when people move, companies are going to come compensate them for that and make up for it. And it's going to be an interesting year as far as what happens afterwards. I like it when you use that word interesting. I guess that also means patience. I want to thank you very much. <laughs> Jeannie Brandover, David Simmons, appreciate it.